You know, from 1984 till about 1989, the Montreal Canadiens had all the potential for a mini dynasty. <coughs> not like the dynasty <coughs> of Montreal in the 1970s, not of the dynasty of the, the Islanders of the early 80s or the, the Edmonton uh, Oilers of the mid 80s. Just a potential every year to get either to the semifinal or final with their lineup. Now, the majority of the players that were there included Patrick Waugh, Matt Snaslin, uh, McPhee, Scroglin, Claude Lemieux, uh, uh, Chelios, all these kind of uh, tough, rugged players on both ends of the ice. But their unofficial leader was this guy. But what happened in the 1987 offseason? This was the year after Montreal couldn't defend their Stanley Cup from 86. Two years later, Montreal made its Stanley Cup finals. They had a major injury to this guy, not on the ice, not on the golf course, not in training, but in polo. Now, Larry Robinson always had a fascination with polo uh, from the kind of mid-part of his career. Now, during off-seasons of his playing days in the mid-1980s, again, he developed a self-professed passion for polo. Now, for a lot of people that don't know what polo is, because some people maybe don't, it's a bunch of people on horseback uh, with long sticks trying to push a ball through a, a, a big net on either side of the field, similar to the size of a soccer net. Now, he took part in games at the Hudson, Quebec, polo fields outside of Montreal, one of the most prestigious locations in Canada for the sport. In fact, the main reason he opted not to play in the 87 Canada Cup tournament was his desire to compete in polo. Now, rumors were having uh, started in the offseason that Robinson would not be playing. He wasn't really transparent why, but when it came out he was going to be playing polo, Quebec media, English media especially, got on his back. Good, but guess what happened? On Sunday, August 9th, 87, Robinson's love of polo led to his most serious injury of his NHL career. Now, uh, while riding his horse at top speed, he swerved around an opposing horse, but crashed into the side of the other. Robinson's right leg was caught between the body of his own horse and the body of the horse he had hit. The leg was totally crushed, although Robinson continued to play in the polo match, which was part of a tournament. Now, after the game, X-rays showed that Robinson had broken his right tibia in the area just below his knee. Surgery was required to place two metal screws into the broken bone, and Robinson spent some time in the hospital after that. Now, his eventual rehab began a few weeks later, in uh, mid-August, and he was unable to take part in any of Montreal's 87 training camp and missed the first 21 games of the 88 season. Now, ironically, there had been talk of Robinson's potential retirement just before the injury, but once he got hurt in the polo match, some controversy arose among fans in the media because there was a sense that Robinson had valued polo more than his obligation to first Team Canada or the Canadians. That a controversy eventually blew over as the Habs barely felt Robinson's absence. Now, the team was 11-5-5 and, and led the Adams division at the time of his return to the when he came back, he told reporters he was as nervous as he had ever been before any game, including his NHL debut. Now, this led to this. 87, the loss to, uh, to uh, the Flyers in the semifinals in the famous end of the series brawl. The next year, again, mediocre, but 89, he got back to the Cups. Now, at the end of the 89 Stanley Cup Finals, after Montreal had lost to Calgary in six games, Robinson at the time was 37, was due to become an unrestricted free agent for the first time in his Hall of Fame career. He had played out his option with the Habs, but the idea of playing anywhere but Montreal still to many uh, fans seemed incredible. By June of 89, however, it seemed Robinson might be on his way out. He had failed to reach an agreement on a new contract with his former teammate, Habs GM, Serge Chavard. The Canes were willing to give Robinson a minimum 15% raise on a one-year deal, but Robinson wanted bigger money and more term. By mid-July, Robinson told the Habs he would make a decision about re-signing by the end of the month. The team's final offer of one year for 500000 was submitted to uh, Robinson's business partner who was acting as his agent. As far as the negotiating goes, I have nothing to do with it, and that's the way I wanted it, Robinson said. During this time, Robinson's longtime teammate Bob Gainey retired from the NHL for an opportunity to coach in Europe. 
With Gainey gone, Robinson's departure became even more likely. On July 25, 89, Ellie King's uh, owner, Bruce McDonald, who had traded for Gretzky a year earlier, announced that the team had reached a, an agreement in principle with Robinson. There was, there was a two-year deal with a one-year club option. He would receive a total of $1.5 million, or 500000 per season. The King structured a deal to top Montreal's offer since the Canes were expected to give him a full year salary bonus if Robinson were to retire after the 1990 season. The Kings were guaranteed an additional 500000 if Robinson wanted to play for three years. McDonald made Robinson the eight Kings player with a contract whose total value topped $1 million. The others were Gretzky, Nichols, Dave Taylor, Luke Robotai, Kelly Rudy, Steve Duchesne, Duchesne and of all people, Mike Krushelinski. So again, the resurgence of the Kings, the uh, the downfall of Montreal was all tied to Robinson. Seeing Robinson in a uh, Kings uniform, he wasn't what he called the, the total leader of the Kings, but again, the veteran presence that he had. And I think that the Kings, with the right other pieces, may have challenged more for a cup, especially at 1990 season, but Edmonton still enough a reserve with Messi and company Glenn Anderson to keep her going. But he went from a polo injury to the biggest contract he ever had, and it all came down to the fact if he would have turned left instead of right in that polo match, maybe he would have never ended up with L.A., he would never have quit the Habs, and maybe, just maybe, the Habs would have won the 87 cup if he would have concentrated more and that's a recurring injury when you break a leg there's there's arthritis there's different stuff so so that's the story of polo and larry robinson and uh I tell you it's crazy so ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry i haven't been podcasting the last few days i was in a vacation in st john seeing my beautiful nieces eleanor and elizabeth so shout out to them uh, i'm very blessed because 10 years ago uh, around 10 years ago i lost my vision and I got it back, and to do this podcast channel, and to see uh, my beautiful family and friends over the last number of years since I got my vision back, has been a blessing. But I like to say this, and I say this to all my friends, if you're the number one defenseman for the Montreal Canadiens, don't play polo. Play the video game of it. Have a good day. Bye.